If you've ever seen My Hero Academia, you know about All For One and his ability to steal quirks. After thinking about this for a bit, and having a fan actually suggest this idea to me, I thought, hey, you know what, I'm gonna give this to Naruto and see what happens. So in today's video, I'm gonna be covering just that, and if you guys go on to enjoy the full story of what if Naruto could steal KK Genkai's, consider leaving a like on the video seeing as it's gonna do so much better in the YouTube algorithm and it'll absolutely make your boy's day and get his ego to get even bigger. That said though, enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. Naruto. Naruto. Wake up, Naruto. We start this story off with Naruto straight passed out on his desk. Bro's literally drooling. And Iruka was not having any of this. Iruka was trying to be paid attention to. And let's just say Iruka was not having the best morning. So this was definitely not the best time to mess with Iruka and be asleep during his classroom. Because of this, Iruka decides, okay, Naruto, if you pass out again, I'll, I'm gonna do you dirty. And Naruto, he pretends to wake up and he looks at Iruka and he's like, ah, sorry, Iruka, I didn't get much sleep last night. And Iruka just goes, whatever, Naruto, pay attention. And then Naruto lays his head down and bro passes right back out. Immediately, Iruka walks over there, slamming a book on Naruto's desk, stunning Naruto and waking him up. And then he says that everybody's going to go outside for some sparring matches. Naruto says whatever, making his way outside, and it would be at this moment that everybody else would have their sparring matches until eventually it would be nothing but Sasuke and Naruto who would be left. Naruto looks to Sasuke, and he knows exactly who he's going to get matched up against. Then he looks back towards Iruka, realizing that there's an evil smile on his face, and he knows exactly what's going to happen. Iruka then says, Naruto, Sasuke, please come to the circle. Do the unison symbol and, um, fight. Before then, you know, Sasuke goes on to absolutely mollywop Naruto, and Naruto would end up losing a sparring match with Sasuke for the 50th time, basically. Not really, but he basically has a 0-7 record with Sasuke, and there was absolutely nothing Naruto could have done. And so, Naruto goes home. When he arrives home, he would slam his stuff on the table and be like, Dummy Ruka, dumb Sasuke, always making me look dumb. I wish... I wish I could get stronger somehow, but I don't know how. Naruto then thinks, Iruka has been talking about this jutsu stuff. I mean, what if I do learn that? What if I learn jutsus? Would that maybe help me out? And so Naruto's like, I guess I'll try it. He goes over to Hiruzen's office and would be like, old man, hey, I want to learn how to use some jutsus. Can you teach me? And so Hiruzen gives him a scroll on the basics of jutsus and stuff like that. Naruto reads it and would get extremely bored. Bro was not having it and he was not really trying to read anything at all. He just looks at the hand signs and tries to perform them for about two weeks where nothing happens. Naruto at this point realizes that he can't exactly learn jutsu. Number one, because he's too lazy and he's not exactly putting in the work that's actually necessarily or necessary or required. And two, because Naruto also has Kurama inside of him and his chakra control is next to zero, considering that he is below Genin level when it comes to ranking. With this in mind, Naruto began to study the arts of ninjutsu, hoping that maybe he could find a way to gain some power, right? But like I said, it doesn't work. He quickly realizes that his efforts were for nothing, and so no matter how hard he trains, no matter what techniques he might master, he'll never exactly be quite as strong as the elite ninja of his village. One day though, Naruto would end up stumbling upon a strange book in a hidden corner of the library. Now, why was Naruto in the library and what was he doing there? Naruto was hoping that he could find some books on training your body, seeing as that's what Naruto decided to start working on. And so, right at the edge of the corner, he would see that there would be a book. And this book would look old, raggedy, and straight crusty dusty. But one thing about it would be elegant. It was filled with ancient knowledge on Keke Genkai and Dojutsus, powerful abilities that could only be passed down through bloodlines. Naruto would actually begin reading through this, considering that it would be the first time in forever that a book would actually intrigue Naruto. 
The information that would be withheld inside of it would intrigue him so much and the possibilities would make Naruto think of many things. Eventually, as Naruto began to read the book, he would soon discover that there was actually a way to gain these abilities. Realizing this, Naruto decides to train so that one day, he could potentially steal a Kekigenkai from others. And so, what Naruto would do is have a brief time skip to about one year before all of the students will graduate from the academy and the first person Renard would think of to try to steal their own Kikigenkai would be Hinata Hyuka, seeing as she has a very powerful dojutsu that is a Kikigenkai. And Naruto thinks to himself that if he can take that from Hinata, then maybe, just maybe, he may be able to get as strong as he needs to to be co become Hokage. And so, what happened? You guys might be like, yeah, what does happen, Zether? And let me explain. So, because Naruto wants to get closer to Hinata and wants to find out the ins and outs of the Byakugan, Naruto would start asking Hinata a couple of questions about it here and there. Hinata answers the questions and Naruto slowly tries to get closer and closer to Hinata. However, it would be a really annoying process considering that she'd be so shy and one time she'd even end up passing out at the thought of Naruto asking her to hang out after school. Naruto didn't mean it in any type of way, but that girl was just so weird. She always had some reason to be strange. Naruto found Hinata a little bit of a weirdo, and ultimately, what would end up happening is Naruto finds out which house Hinata lives in, and he would decide that in the dead of night, Naruto will be breaking into the Hina into the Hyuga compound and trying to steal her Keiki Genkai. Naruto would actually succeed in this, being able to use his knuckleheaded ninja prowess to get past the Hyuga Byakugan guards and make his way towards the Byakugan princess, Hinata. Once he would enter her room, Naruto places his hand gently over Hinata's face, and so the power of her Byakugan would begin to seep away. It would almost be as though Hinata's eyes would like lose their whole entire ability to grow veins and even activate the Byakugan. And then those same veins would pop in in Naruto's face as he uses the Byakugan and begins looking around. Noticing that one of the Hyuga members was about to come do one of his usual patrols on Hinata, Naruto hides in one of the corners, leaves Hinata there to be asleep, and ultimately when this ninja would end up leaving, Naruto in the dead of night still would end up making his way back home. Once he would end up arriving, Naruto laughs, realizing that he finally now has stolen his first Keke Genkai. Hinata trusted him too much, and Naruto did what everybody who possibly would want to steal powers would do. He would take advantage of her kindness, and he would have stolen it from her while she slept. At first, no one noticed what he was doing, but eventually, as time passed and more and more ninjas would slowly begin to lose their Keke Genkais in the village, the village would become more aware of the thefts, and they tried to catch Naruto, but he was too quick, he was too agile, and he was too cunning. Not powerful quite yet, because he hasn't stolen anything insane yet, but he has definitely been stealing some very, very interesting abilities. Are the abilities of the Yamanaka clan of Kiki Genkai? I'm really not so sure. I'm pretty sure that that's just the technique. But for now, we're going to be saying that in this particular series, it is a Kiki Genkai. Naruto steals one of those abilities from an Inazuka clan member. And not only that, but Naruto would also steal the abilities of the um, um, uh, Shikamaru Nara of the Nara clan, right? And so Naruto now would have access to three Keke Genkais, and three people in the village would have lost their abilities of using their Keke Genkais. You guys might be like, wouldn't Hinata realize that it was Naruto? Well, not exactly, because Naruto wouldn't make these abilities known to everybody else, and any time that Naruto would train, he would make his way towards the Forest of Death. You guys also might be wondering why Ho the Hokage Hiruzen couldn't find out, considering that he has the Crystal Ball. And because of that, Naruto would have ended up creating a devious disguise. Naruto, you know, he changes his hair color and, you know, he puts on a different outfit that Naruto wouldn't usually wear. Not only that, but eventually after having to do that over and over, Naruto realizes that that's too hard. He goes back to the library and finds out about a particular jutsu that can help him out in his endeavor, the transformation jutsu. Naruto uses this to transform into a random, non-like specific villager and just go around and steal more and more Kiki Genkais. They would try to catch Naruto, but like I said, it wouldn't really work because every time it would be a different person that Naruto would transform into. Just 
random people inside of magazines that they would have never expected Naruto to have gotten a hold of. Naruto would continue stealing Kikigenkai, but without any leads, Naruto just continues getting stronger and stronger, and nobody would particular be, particularly be able to take out Naruto. Eventually, we do get one year fa uh, fast forward in time, and Naruto hasn't exactly whipped the abilities of using the Byakugan or the Nara's ability, or even the ability of the um, Yamanaka clan, right? I said Inazuka, but I'm pretty sure that that's Kiba's clan, but no, Yamanaka clan, right? And so, because of this, Naruto just continues acting like his usual goofball self. Eventually, we would find ourselves in the situation where the team would be announced and Naruto would still be on Team 7. Two weeks worth of D-rank missions would pass by as well, and because of this, nothing would really happen. I mean, Naruto would just kind of be present, and everything kind of goes down just like it would in canon. You can't really see many differences here, and eventually they finally would get announced that they're going to be going on a different mission than usual. This time, they're going to be responsible for finding the bridge builder and taking him to the land of the waves safely. They pretty much end up accepting this mission, and during the portion in time when the Demon Brothers would attack Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura, and Tazuna, and Kakashi would immediately fake his death to see what his team was capable of, Naruto this time around, not being scared of two Chunin level ninjas, would immediately rush in at one and punch him straight in the side of the jaw before kneeing him in the stomach and palming him straight towards the direction of a tree, knocking him down and Sasuke being shocked at this would almost end up getting taken out by one of the demon brothers, however Kakashi comes in and swiftly would be able to take them out. Kakashi notices that Naruto's movements were Hyuga like but he wouldn't say anything and the reason they were Hyuga like was because Naruto has been taking a little bit of an interest in their particular ability. Abilities. Naruto also was taking a huge interest in Sasuke, considering that he has an insanely powerful Kikigenkai as the shutting gun. And because Naruto doesn't have any other Uchiha members to steal the Kikigenkai from, Naruto is eventually going to have to take it from Sasuke. However, since Sasuke hasn't exactly awakened it, Naruto can't steal what isn't there. It's like trying to take money from somebody that's poor, you know what I mean? So that still doesn't happen, and Naruto's trying to play his cards carefully so that he doesn't get found out by the village that he's the one responsible for taking all of the Kikigenkais and having everything that's been going wrong in the village be pinned on him. Naruto, eventually throughout the journey they would end up encountering Zabuza and the battle between Kakashi and Zabuza goes down just like in canon. Eventually he gets trapped, Naruto and Sasuke help him out and once everything seems like it's all going to be fine, Haku enters the situation and takes Zabuza away pretending to be a tracking mist ninja. Because of this, we end up cutting right back to Tazuna's house and all of this, and I literally mean all of this goes just like it does in canon. Until we finally get to the portion in time when Naruto arrives on the bridge. Now, when Naruto arrives on the bridge and sees that Sasuke is inside of an ice, like, dome prison thing, Naruto gets, like, the most devious smile. And, you know, he knows what he has to do now. Naruto smirks knowing that he's definitely going to be having to take advantage of Haku's ice abilities. That's another Kikigenkai for the books that Naruto's going to definitely have to be stealing. And Naruto would do just that. Naruto jumping into the situation would begin to act like a knuckleheaded ninja. And Naruto even uses the desperation of the situation to try to forcefully awaken Sasuke's Uchiha bloodline. Eventually, Eventually it would happen, however Sasuke would end up inev inevitably being pierced by a bunch of little um, Senban needles and Naruto watching this happen thinking that Sasuke had died would go into a rage unlike any other. Naruto realizes that that was literally his last chance at getting the Sharingan and because of this rage would end up going through Naruto's body. He ends up blitzing Haku, punching him straight through the glass in the ice mirror and sending him back out into the normal dimension mention where Haku has no control over anything. Naruto then places his hand on Haku's face and sucks out the Keke Genkai before Haku could do a thing about it. Naruto smirks and then Naruto would land a finishing blow on Haku before Haku could even get the chance to try to go save Zabuza.
Yakuza. And so, Naruto would then stay in there and look around until eventually, Gato and all of his men would end up arriving and would end up making a pretty big scene out of the entire situation. Gato ends up kicking the body of Zabuza, saying that if he can't do things right, you just have to do it yourself. Telling his men to attack, when ultimately Kakashi, Sasuke, Naruto, and the entire village ends up arriving to say that they're not going to back down and that they're finally going to protect their village like they should have done so long ago. This would scare off Gato and all of his men and ultimately they would end up fleeing with their tail between their legs, leading to Team 7 successfully completing the mission and the bridge still being named, the Great Naruto Bridge. Because of this, we finally jump back towards where we would be in canon in terms of the tuning exams and the preparations, and all of that goes down accordingly. Now, finally, when things would slightly begin to change would be when Gara would be brought into the equation. Because when Naruto sees that Gara has an ability or a control over sand, Naruto would immediately recognize what this is. That is a sand KK Genkai, or magnet style is what naruto would deem it to be as its true nature you know what i mean and so because of this naruto would begin devising a plan to try to take gara's keki genkai simply wading things through and making his way towards the chunin exams and facing off against gara discreetly taking the keki genkai away from him there or potentially in the dead of night what would pretty much end up happening is that Naruto decides that ultimately he would probably rather do this in the dead of night. And so, what ends up pretty much going down is that everything goes down just like it can. And I'm talking Sasuke getting whooped by Lee. I'm talking Naruto having a speech in the written portion of the tuning exams. I'm talking Sasuke getting a hickey from Orochimaru on some freaky stuff. You know what I mean? Orochimaru was on some freak timing right there. But ultimately, Naruto would find himself in the perfect position after the one month time skip would happen and after his battle against Kiba. Naruto realizes that he has the best and most wonderful opportunity to steal Gara's Kekigenkai. Naruto begins to make his way towards the village hidden in the sand and using his newfound Kekigenkai abilities such as the Byakugan, such as the um, Inazuka clan, or no not Inazuka but Yamanaka clan's ability right? He also has access to uh, the Nara's ability, and he also has access to Haku's ice abilities. This means that we would have one of our first biggest fights in the series. We're talking ice versus sand. In the original story of Naruto, Dosu is the one who ends up trying to attack Gara in the middle of the night. However, he sadly fails because of course he was. Gara is a Jinchuriki, he has the ability of magnet release, and not to mention, Gara has a tail beast inside of him that's making him completely insane at every single minute. Dosu stood no chance if we're barely being honest with ourselves here. But what if instead of Dosu being taken out there and killed and completely taken out of the series, Naruto spots Dosu about to attack Gara and swoops in and defeats G Dosu, making it so that he was never even a factor in this battle. But instead, Naruto turns the corner and arrives at a rooftop only to see Gara there. Naruto ends up approaching him after activating a transformation jutsu on a rooftop and would say that it's an honor to face the great Gara. Gara looks at him weirdly and then says, What's your name? Naruto says it's not important, but suddenly, San tries to cover Naruto, but he dodges because of the Byakugan being active and Naruto jumps over the sand and freezes it, with Gara saying, So, you have a KK Genkai. Perfect. Mother needs your blood. Rushing in at the direction of Naruto and beginning to use his sand to attack at Naruto. Naruto would dodge the sand as much as he possibly can, but because Naruto isn't exactly a speed tank, what Naruto mainly has to do during this fight is freeze the sand so that the sand can't get to him. Naruto would begin freezing and freezing and freezing multiple attacks using the aid of the Byakugan to dodge the sand and using its 360 degree view to see whenever the sand was about to sneak up on him from the earth or anything like that. So Naruto is all of his bases covered but, but one. And that one would be not taking into account that his ice, it's not as fast as Gara's sand. So he would get put on the back foot slightly for a bit. But eventually, Naruto decides that he's done playing, and he continues amping up his strength more and more and more. Naruto gets more powerful by the second, 
and Naruto starts using speeds even greater than the one that he's accustomed to. Why? Because of the adrenaline and because of the fact that Naruto just wants this victory so much that his willpower itself is forcing Naruto to actively get stronger and stronger. Naruto using these abilities in tandem with his will of wanting to defeat Gara would finally be able to land an attack, freezing Gara in place and ultimately creating the ice crystal mirror jutsu quick enough so that by the time that Gara broke out of the ice, Naruto was able to just easily throw a bunch of shuriken at Gara, which Gara tries using his sand defense and Naruto decides that well if he can't do that then he's simply going to have to resort to some sort of piercing attack. Naruto realizing that he doesn't have anything powerful enough to defeat the sh the the sand bear uh the sand coffin or not not the sand coffin but the 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 little dome that Sasuke would have pierced in the original Naruto. Naruto would be like, "All right, what do I do?" And he really can't come up with anything because it's like, "What can he do?" Naruto would think to himself, "Okay, if I can't get him now, I'll simply have to wait." And Naruto does the most fiendish thing in the world. Bro literally sits down and waits. He just he just literally chills there. Eventually, Gara would drop the defense, and Naruto would be right there waiting for him, ready to use the Shadow Possession Jutsu or the Shadow Possession Keke Genkai, which I turn into a Keke Genkai for this series. Naruto using this would be able to make Gara walk over towards Naruto. And then Naruto places his hand on Gara's face, sucking out Shukaku and his magnet release. So now Gara loses the complete ability of all of the things that pretty much made him special. But one good thing that comes out of this is that Gara doesn't have to deal with the burden of being a Jinchuriki anymore. And the worst part about being a Jinchuriki was that Gara had a very unstable ceiling on himself. That's why Shukaku was always able to make fun of him and like scream at him and just constantly torture him through the night. But now, now Shukaku's living inside of Naruto, rent free, and he can't even do anything to Naruto. Naruto sleeps just fine at night. He does not care whatsoever what Gara says to him. He he just he just passes out like a good boy. Just me me me. You know what I mean? But he pretty much ends up arriving back at the village after defeating Gara, And after this, he would kind of realize something. He, he realizes that he doesn't want to become Hokage anymore. Naruto just wants more power, more influence. Naruto doesn't be the, want to be the Hokage of a village. Naruto wants to be the Hokage of the world. He wants to rule all of it with an iron fist. And the only way he could do that is if he's strong. He wants a world where only the strong are on top and the weak are left to suffer. That's the world that Naruto dreams of. And that's exactly what Naruto was hoping to achieve. He wants more power. And a smile would continue to creep on his face as eventually he would return to the Hidden Leaf Village. Once he arrives, Naruto would eventually end up having his um, tale of just hanging out with Jiraiya, meeting Jiraiya, training under Jiraiya, and ultimately learning abilities like the summoning jutsu and how to control partial parts of the QB, right? Now, Naruto knows that it's only a matter of time before he's able to steal more insane powers. So Naruto decides that he's just going to bide his time and try to steal Sasuke's shotting gun soon. And so Naruto acts goofy per usual eventually leading to the one month battle against Neji Yuga and Naruto Naruto kicks Neji's ass I'm sorry it, it's just it ain't no if ands or buts about it like Naruto wins it's it's a one-sided massacre after Gara arrives to the arena however for his battle against Sasuke he seems like a like a little like a little pski, and he no longer has Shukaku Naruto took him as I said before so Sasuke is easily able to stomp Gara, and nothing would really happen. Because Gara doesn't go crazy and leave the village, there's never any signal for the, for the attack to start. And so a random impatient sand ninja would start everything and attack one of the Hidden Leaf village members. Eventually somebody uses the Genjutsu on all the villagers, and it would be at this moment that the battles would all begin. Naruto would see all of the chaos ensuing, and Naruto thinks that it's his perfect uh, opportunity to pretty much steal a KK Genkai, or do something, you know what I mean? And so, 
What Naruto would do is approach Sasuke who would be facing off against a random ninja. And Naruto arrives and you know he completely blindsides Sasuke. He grabs him by the head and just sucks out his Sharingan abilities. Naruto takes Sasuke's Sharingan and then looking towards the direction of the person he was fighting, he would quickly kill them making sure that there was no witnesses. He then wakes Sasuke up and would be like, what happened Sasuke? And Sasuke would say that he doesn't know that he like must have gotten blindsided or something. Naruto says he might have and then he pretty much just pretends to face off against random ninjas with Sasuke. While this is happening, Hiruzen dies to Orochimaru. And Naruto smiles knowing that he doesn't have to worry about the old fart anymore. He's finally out of his way. Because of this, eventually the battle would end and the mission of retrieving Tsunade would finally happen. Naruto goes with Jiraiya and he gets attacked by Itachi. And when seeing his Sharingan, all Naruto wants is to steal them. He would attempt to but he would get absolutely bodied by Itachi and Kisame, ultimately being rescued by Jiraiya and... Sasuke ends up arriving just in time, not even able to activate his Sharingan for some reason. And, you know, Itachi, he'd be like, Itachi, what happened to my Sharingan? You know, asking him, like, why his Sharingans don't work anymore. And Itachi would be confused by this, like, completely unsure. But he would ultimately fake being an evil brother, body him, and then eventually they retreat. They eventually find Tsunade, and the battle between Kabuto and Naruto goes down just like in the original. Keep in mind, all of this stuff goes down exactly like you guys remember in canon, so there's no real reason for me to cover the Tsunade retrieval arc. But eventually, they end up returning back to the village, and Sasuke, having lost access to a shutting gun, is really of no use to Orochimaru. So let's say that the let, let's say let's say that Sasuke does get kidnapped, right? Let's say he does successfully get kidnapped, and he's with Orochimaru, and Orochimaru is like Sasuke activate your Sharingan and then Sasuke is like oh yeah about that I can't activate it yeah what do you think's gonna happen yeah Orochimaru he doesn't want Sasuke he's basically a he's basically a 16 year old kid you know what I mean he's not in that ripe age that Orochimaru loves so instead I'm gonna be tossing Sasuke a bone and just letting him get defeated by Naruto in the final valley Naruto would use his abilities and would easily be able to take Sasuke out, ultimately taking him back to the village where Sasuke would end up pretty much being forced and put under surveillance for a couple of months, Sasuke not being allowed to go with Orochimaru and eventually it would finally get to him. After Sakura, Kakashi would talk to him day after day after day and Sasuke realizes that he doesn't even have access to his Sharingan anymore, Sasuke kind of becomes a really 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 horrible shell of himself. All Sasuke has now is just nothing. Sasuke doesn't even have access to a damned Sharingan. He's such a useless Uchiha. No wonder his brother left him alive. Sasuke becomes a non-factor going forward. And Naruto? Naruto during this three year term skip that he's going to be having with Jiraiya, or before the mission to pretty much go off with Jiraiya starts, Naruto just completely abandons the leaf. Naruto decides that He's pretty much taken all of the per powerful KK Genkai that he could have taken from the leaf and learned all he can learn from Jiraiya. Ending up learning the Rasengan and summoning Jutsu, Naruto thinks that that's really all that old fart was going to teach him. And so, Naruto decides that instead of staying in the village and going off and training with Jiraiya, he'd rather explore his options. See if maybe he can steal some KK Genkais another way. Maybe he can find other people and rip their abilities away just as he did to Gara, arriving to different villages and going through and ultimately massacring a bunch of people, taking KK Genkai's left and right, eventually unlocking abilities such as Swift Release, magnet, uh, Magma Release because he would have ended up taking out that person who would have uh, had uh, Son Goku inside of them, the Tailed Beast, having access to him and going through multiple, multiple villages and just stealing weak like KK Genkai. Naruto during his battle against Kimimaru would have even taken his KK Genkai. And Naruto now just has access to so many KK Genkais it's not even funny. Through his travels Naruto would find somebody with an explosion KK Genkai. And Naruto would take their KK Genkais as well. Keep in mind this isn't Deidara, this is somebody else. But eventually Naruto discovers that a bunch of the Akatsuki members actually have access to strange abilities. And Naruto, Naruto wants in. 
So Naruto using the bingo book and using intel that he would gather from different villages would end up picking off Akatsuki members one by one, starting with Hidan and Kakazu. Because Hidan has an ability that Naruto is very, very, very intrigued by. And this ability is the ability to be immortal. Naruto doesn't believe in any of this Joshin stuff. He simply thinks that it's more of a KK Genkai. So he tries his luck and goes after them. Ultimately, however, Naruto does get bodied by Hidan and Kakazu because he's still not strong enough regardless of how much, you know, power he does pack. Like ice and sand wasn't really enough for him to defeat both of them at the same time. He probably could have defeated Hidan on his own, but not both. And so he is forced to retreat. They wonder who in the world that kid was, and ultimately they find out that it was Naruto Uzumaki, the Nine Tails Jinchuriki. They beat themselves over the head because of this because they literally could have just captured him early and then this could have made their whole life so much easier. But they didn't. So now they kind of just have to live with that. Naruto continues growing stronger and stronger, going to different villages, learning different fighting techniques, gaining access to different jutsus and abilities, learning actually way more than he would have learned if he would have actually went with Jiraiya. And at about the two year mark, Naruto th thinks that it might actually be a good idea for him to go to Orochimaru. And so for the final year, Naruto goes to Orochimaru telling him that he has so many Kiki Genkais and he can just take his body. Orochimaru agrees and Naruto tells him that all he wants is to become powerful. Orochimaru tells him that can be arranged and ultimately Naruto goes on and trains under Orochimaru with the intention of like pretty much body him one day as soon as he gets the chance. And after one year of learning different techniques from Orochimaru and actually taking the Akiki Genkai's of multiple test subjects that Orochimaru would have worked on, Naruto eventually gains access to the, uh, the abilities of Jugo, like the forced sage mode. Not only that, but he also gains abilities uh, such as wood release because Orochimaru's experimentation would have ended up leading Naruto to being like, oh, okay, so you have a ninja that has wood release, right? And Naruto goes and attacks the user of this, which would actually be, uh, not Kabuto, but um, uh, what's that guy? I forgot his name. Like, bro is so forgettable. Yamato. Yamato, right. But that's going to be it a little bit. Trust. But Naruto does take one ability that is very, very intriguing. And that is Suigetsu's water kicking Genkai. The ability that allows Suigetsu to turn into water and all that stuff. Yeah. Naruto definitely takes access to that. And let's just say that Naruto has been spamming this ability. I mean, just imagine you had the power to turn into water and be completely intangible to attacks. I mean, bro, I would abuse that power. So, yeah, safe to say he definitely takes advantage of the situation. Eventually, though, what pretty much ends up going down is that we would find ourselves in a moment in which Naruto would just walk into the office of Orochimaru or his room and just straight rest in peace his ass you know like he, he just kills him and orochimaru would just be looked at by kabuto who would stand in the door and naruto just walks right by him saying clean the mess up and walks out kabuto's like clenching his fist but he knows he can't do anything to naruto considering that he beat him when he was a little kid and if he tried now he'd probably get killed as well so naruto ends up making his way back to the hidden leaf village after so many years and once naruto arrives to the gates Naruto immediately takes out the ninjas that would not be allowing him to walk inside. This would alert the Tsunade and the Hokage and all of that stuff, but Naruto really doesn't care. Naruto ends up going to the Anbu organization area, and Naruto using a powerful, powerful ice jutsu would end up freezing the whole thing, before he then says, Yamato, come out now! And, you know, a bunch of Anbu members come outside and, you know, they surround Naruto. Naruto just smirks and he's like, <laughs> and then a bunch of attacks would be thrown at him. Naruto turning into water and ultimately coming back out using a sword and decapitating them instantly. And eventually Danzo would make his way outside and would talk to Naruto saying, Ah, Naruto, you know, I didn't think I would ever have the honor of speaking to you. Now, I understand that you want to talk to Yamato, yes? But unfortunately, before you talk to him, you're going to have to talk to me. He would say that with a smirk, thinking to himself, oh, you know, I'll just I'll just beat this kid, you know, and then take his take his abilities and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, I'll just manipulate him and have him work for me. But Naruto's like, shut up, old man. And he literally kills, you know, Donzo. But Donzo using the ability to come back to life 
ends up coming back and Naruto would be bothered by this. However, he realizes that Danzo, Danzo has a couple more Sharingan than he's letting on, right? So Naruto blitzes at Danzo and instead of killing him this time, Naruto simply freezes Danzo and then using his abilities to steal kicking Genkais would end up taking the abilities that Danzo has access to, such as the, the cells of, uh, oh no, that's not a Kiki Genkai, but he would pretty much take the abilities of all of the Sharingan users that, you know, he would have gained access to. Like, keep in mind, Danzo has a bunch of Sharingan implanted into his arms. So now Naruto has multiple different Mangekyo-like abilities, not to mention he has the ability of Kuro and Matsukami because he ended up taking, well, Danzo's Sharingans. And now Danzo doesn't have any way of coming back to life over and over and over and over. So following this, Naruto just kills Danzo, leading to Yamato finally arriving outside and being like, who wants me? And then Naruto's like, that would be me. But for just appearing right next to him and bam, just knocking Yamato out, saying thanks. As he pretty much just steals his kick in Genkai and walks out of the Leaf Village. And nobody there was able to stop him. Mike Guy was out on a mission. Kakashi was out on a mission. Sasuke is a complete non-factor. And Jiraiya is out doing research. So that was that. Naruto now gained access to so many more Kiki Genkais. And with these abilities... Naruto intends to finally attack multiple Akatsuki members once more, trying to test his luck and see how far he can get with his newfound powers. And the first group that Naruto would attack would be Kakazu and Hidan. And if you really think about it, right now, Naruto is pretty much doing a service to the Hidden Leaf Village and pretty much all of the other villages that would have their tail be stolen from them, considering that Naruto is going to single-handedly pretty much try to take out the Akatsuki. Is he doing it because of good reasons? Obviously not. He's just trying to get the powers and, you know, get stronger and have an influence, right? And so he ends up inevitably finding Kakazu and Hidan, and he would find them right after they just took out a tailed beast. Naruto seeing this would be like, oh, great, you guys took out a tailed beast user. And, you know, I mean, not a tailed beast user, but a, a Jinchuriki. And, you know, he just smirks and he just takes it right under their noses. He's like, I'll be taking that. He takes the uh, the turtle one, the one that looks like a turtle. He absorbs that ability. And then he just looks towards the direction of Kakazu and Hidan. And, you know, they look at him and they say, kid, you look all grown up now. Maybe this time you'll actually pose a threat. Hidan would laugh and say that last time he was a complete joke. And Arto says, well, I'm different from last time appearing right next to Hidan and Kakazu and saying that this time things are going to be different as using his sand it would cover the entirety of Kakazu and Hidan's body and then Naruto crushes the sand leading all of Hidan's body to just completely go mushy so even though Hidan is immortal he won't exactly be able to eat anymore because his whole body was turned into mush and Kakazu's body would be completely destroyed as well. Having now completely mastered the ability of Gara Sand Kiki Genkai, having speed that was just completely unable to be tracked by Hidan and Kakazu, Naruto would easily be able to take advantage of this said fact and easily take them both out, making his way towards the direction of more Akatsuki members. The next group that he would attack would be Sasori and Daedara. Now, when he proceeds the attack on them, what would pretty much end up going down is that he would arrive and Datoro would say, Hey, get out of here before I blow you up. I'm working on some art. And Sasori would end up arriving and being like, <laughs> What are you doing here? Surely you haven't come to die. And Naruto just smirks and says, Oh no, I'm not dying today. The only person's dying is you two. Daedara shoots an explosion at, at you know, Naruto, and Naruto blows up in front of them. Daedara begins to laugh and, say, and says that he was so weak, and Sasari says, sure, he was. They turn back around and they begin getting ready to like do something else, but then Naruto completely comes back healed, and they're like, what? And, you know, Naruto just looking at their direction would say, boo. As, you know, using wood style, he creates a massive Buddha, and it just... Bam, 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 like the, the fists, they just come flying in, right? Sasori gets completely crushed under that, 
and Datoro would barely fly away with his bird. Naruto using his Saiyan abilities would fly over towards the sky with him and Datoro would then see that Naruto was right next to him. Naruto activating his fake like sage mode ability would then end up going a little bit berserk and absolutely destroying Datoro. And following this, Naruto steals his, uh, his explosion release and then now we find ourselves with an immortal Naruto with explosion release who pretty much can't be stopped. Bro is now pretty much all for one. And without an ability like one for all in this universe, Naruto is just too strong to be stopped. I'm not going to lie. The way that I was originally going to do this series is that he gets so strong, but eventually he gets stopped and the power corrupts him and ruins him. But this Naruto was so dang OP that I can't even physically figure out a way to do something like that. Naruto literally has every kick again, Kai. He has a bunch of different Mangekyo like ability abilities with his Sharingans and it's just insane. It's literally just insane. Naruto accesses the the Mangekyo because he has Shisui's Mangekyo Sharingan. So he has Mangekyo abilities of that. He also has the Susano, and Naruto was just looking like an absolute tank. Now, the only people left for Naruto to take out would be Konan and Pain, as well as Itachi and Kisame. And the first group that Naruto decides to go after would be Itachi and Kisame. Naruto tries to find them, but he just can't. But eventually he finds himself some leads that would lead him straight to Pain and Konan. When he would end up arriving, Naruto seeing that there would be six people in front of him, Naruto would say that that's quite a lot of people for one man. And Naruto would then create like five sand clones. He would create three water clones. Naruto creates four wood clones. And then Bro goes on to create 400 shadow clones. As you know, Pain looking at him would smile. And then all of the pads would then go on to attack all of the Naruto clones that would be there. However, Naruto's clones would just overpower. Like we're talking so many kicking Genkai's are coming after Pain at once. And ultimately the diva path has to use the, uh, the, the ability to just push everything away to try to defeat naruto but naruto was not having it he just continues shitting out clones after more after more after more after more and he just continues the complete onslaught until eventually we would pretty much end up having naruto just overpowering nagato i mean Bro, I, I know Pain is OP, but just imagine how many clones Naruto's coming at him with, with different Kekigenkai abilities that each one of them is using a different one. Like, that just sounds scary to me, right? And ultimately, that would be the thing that defeats the camel's back and would be able to defeat Obito. I mean, sorry, not Obito, but Nagato. Eventually, Nagato would be pressed by Naruto. He would kill Konan in front of him, and then he would rip the Rinnegan eyes out of Nagato by stealing his ability and pretty much just putting Nagato to sleep forever, right? And after this happens, we would end up having Naruto then deciding that instead of going after Itachi and Kisame, why not just go for the big fish? I mean, there's nobody else that Naruto could want to have. Itachi just has a Sharingan, but Naruto, he has a Mangekyo. So let's go after the leader, why don't we? Naruto attacks Obito, and it would be a short-lived battle. Naruto arrives right in front of Obito and says, So you're the leader of the Akatsuki, eh? <laughs> Thought you'd be a little bit more imposing. And Obito just looks at the direction of Naruto, using his moderate voice would say, Why have you arrived? And Naruto just says, I'm just here to, you know, you know me, I'm just hanging around. And, you know, Obito just looks at him and says, So you're here to play games? We can play games. Blitzing at Naruto, using his Kiki Genkai ability to pretty much, or yeah, his Kiki Genkai ability to phase through Naruto and throw an attack at him. Naruto's body would get ripped in half, however, it would regenerate quickly using his water like abilities from Suigetsu, before he shoots a water bullet at the direction of Obito, which he would dodge as well, and then they would have a battle which lasts for 10 minutes. 10 minutes worthy of Naruto straight just trying to figure out Obito's ability and seeing if there's anything at all that he could use to counter that. Naruto realizing that there's not a lot of things that Naruto can actually pull out of his bag to do this would decide that he's just going to be taking out one of the important cards that he never thought he'd have to use the ability of shikamaru catching obito off guard using shadow paralysis ability would be able to grab onto um obito and ultimately hold him still leading obito not to be able to use his abilities of his sharingan and then naruto just grabs a blade and makes obito commit seppuku now before doing that 
what pretty much Naruto ends up doing is that, you know what I mean? He then draws a circle of Hidan, the Joshin circle, and then he just kills himself. But because his body is made of water, it just doesn't do anything to Naruto. But Obito, bro dies. He just, he just falls and dies. And then the explosion being heard from a couple of uh, kilometers away, Jiraiya ends up arriving. Once he sees Naruto and he sees what Naruto has become, he would be like, what happened to you, Naruto? And Naruto would say, I changed. I grew powerful. Didn't you?